my next guest has just an absolute, almost unbelievable story. Johnny Lee Clary. He learned to hate. Now, how do you learn to hate? We're going to find out. And it happened to him at a very young age. Now, I want you to take a good look at this. I grew up in a place where people were taught segregation and it was a way of life. Blacks had their schools, their churches, and their side of town, and whites had theirs. But when I was 11 years old, my father committed suicide in front of me, and it was very devastating for me. I felt rejection because my dad had killed himself, and it was important for me to try to find acceptance. And then I met a man from the Ku Klux Klan when I was 14 years old, and they offered me a family. So at 14 years old, I joined the Klan Youth Corps. I eventually uh, would rise to the top, and they elected me as their national imperial wizard. I met and fell in love with a girl that I just thought was the greatest girl in the world, and it turned out she was an FBI informant. The Klan turned against me, and they started calling me an FBI informant. And I was just absolutely wiped out financially. I was trying to get a job. I didn't have a friend left. I decided to commit suicide. I loaded up a gun and I looked down and there was a Bible sitting there on the table. And I thought maybe there's a prayer I can pray before I kill myself to get forgiveness for what I'm about to do. And I opened up the Bible, and of all places for that Bible to fall open to, it fell open in Luke chapter 15, the story of the prodigal son. And I began to read the story about a young man who walked away from his family and he found himself broke. When he didn't have any money left, he didn't have a friend left in the world. And that's the way I felt. And so I knew that, that if I would repent, maybe God would forgive me. I prayed that prayer, and the next morning, the telephone rang, and a man offered me a job. And so I knew that God had, uh, had heard my prayers. And I got the newspaper, and I said, Lord, show me where you want me to go to church. And there was an ad in there, and it said, Victory Christian Center, a church where all races of people are welcome. And I said, oh, no, God, I'm not going there. I said, I'll forget that, you know. But I remembered where the Ku Klux Klan had gotten me in that way of thinking. So uh, next thing you know, I started sharing my testimony and getting invites and things like that. And so I went into the full-time ministry and been in it all these years. So I am truly a miracle, a walking, talking miracle of God when you look at my life and you see the change in my life today. I've learned something over the years as my mind has been renewed. There's beauty in the color. Instead of looking at color as something negative, you look at color as something positive, kind of like a rose garden. God looks down on us and sees a beautiful rose garden with different colors, and that's the way that we should look at the human race. I told you, you were in for an incredible experience, didn't I? Please welcome to Helpline, Johnny Lee Clary. for coming to the helpline. And let me tell you, I have been so inspired, truly, watching your DVDs, reading your material, and seeing what God has done for you in your life and how he is using you to reach out and to change men and women's lives. We're just thrilled. Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I never dreamed it possible till I really knew the Word of God, because <coughs> the Word of God says, with God, all things are possible. And if he could save someone that used to be in the Ku Klux Klan, I guess there's hope for everybody in this world. You know, you, you say something in your testimony, Johnny, that really gripped my heart. You said that when you were a young boy, you learned to hate. Mm -hmm. How does someone learn to hate? Well, you know, hatred is a learned response. You're not born with it. Someone has to teach it to you. Proverbs 22, 6, you know, says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is older, he will not depart from it. Well, the first time I was five years old, first time I ever saw a black person, I thought the man was made out of chocolate. And I said, look, Daddy, there's a chocolate-covered man. And my dad, he said, son, that's a, and he used a horrible word to describe the man. And when he did, he planted the seed of hate inside that little boy's heart. And the environment that I grew up in, everybody was taught to hate. They were 
was taught to separate. And even the churches, they had white churches and black churches, right. black neighborhoods, white neighborhoods, and everybody was separated. And so people were taught to fear. And you know, Dr. Sorrell, uh, Martin Luther King was once asked, why do people hate one another? And he said, men hate one another because they fear one another. They fear one another because they do not know one another, and they do not know one another because they are separated. So segregation and separation is wrong, and it's certainly God has no segregated neighborhoods up in heaven, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Your father committed suicide. You were how old? I was 11 years old. Uh, my father was a hard-working man. We were from a middle-class uh, uh, family, and my dad worked hard to get uh, everything for his family, but my mother cheated on him and was an alcoholic and ran around on him, and she drove him into bankruptcy, and I guess my father just couldn't take anymore, and I, I watched my father shoot himself when I was 11 years old. And your mother abandoned you? after your dad committed suicide? Yes, sir. Uh, my mother didn't want nothing to do with me, and uh, she told me to, you know, hit the road. What and, happened uh, to you after that when she abandoned you? Well, she sent me out to the streets of East L.A., East Los Angeles, California, to live with my sister, who was living with a drug dealer. And uh, I was put into the most horrible, roughest neighborhood you could think of. I was being beaten up and chased by gangs all the time, and I had to learn how to fight. I had to learn how to take care of myself. Uh, on the streets of East L.A., if you don't know how to fight while well, you're in trouble. And uh, so uh, I, I was just a kid that nobody wanted. And one day I met, I met a man from the Ku Klux Klan that told me, he said, son, you've had a horrible life and what you need is a family. And if you'll wow. come join the Ku Klux Klan, we'll be your family. He said the word Ku Klux Klan stands for circle of family. And he said, if you'll come join the Klan, we'll be your family. And so at this point in time, I would have went with any cult that came along that encouraged me and uh, because I'd had so much discouragement. And I would have probably went with the church if someone would have came along and witnessed to me yeah. at that age too. You know, but, that's so true. And the church needs to hear that because we're, we're too quiet. Absolutely. We're absolutely too quiet. And we need to be out there and encouraging these young people or these gangs and these pimps will be more than glad to encourage these young people for us. And we need to get out there and we need to encourage them with the How word of God. How did you rise to the height that you did in the KKK? I started out, uh, I was a recruiter. And then they promoted me to bodyguard. Then they promoted me to public relations. And then I made uh, head of Oklahoma. At the age of 20, I was the youngest Grand Dragon in the history of that organization. Now, wasn't there anything inside you that was uh, disquieted? Uh, on the inside, I was struggling with a lot of yeah. things because I did not agree with a lot of the things that was being taught. And I remember one time I was being protested by a bunch of religious people that were telling me I was going to burn in hell. And I was thinking about beating them up. When all of a sudden I seen a man appear in front of me and he had a glow on his face and I knew there was something different about this man. And he handed me a tract and it simply said, Jesus loves you. Uh -huh. And I didn't get saved right then and there. And many Christians kept coming across my path. But you know, Isaiah 55, 11 says, God's word never returns. Every void. Every and every time somebody like him planted a purpose, seed, that yeah. seed was going to grow yeah. because God's going to have his way. Now, you go through incredible circumstances, valleys deeper and deeper, despair, yes, sir. divorces, alcohol takes its toll over your mm -hmm. life. Now, how does somebody like that, filled with hate, fall into these incredible despairs, how does someone like that find such incredible peace that you have today? Well, I, I was on the verge of committing suicide. I, I made it all the way Alcoholic. to the top. Well, I drank, I drank a lot, and I was, I was uh, using, I was even using drugs and smoking a lot of dope. And, and there I was, you know, the, the, the head of the Ku Klux Klan. I was a national leader, and I didn't like it. Once I got there, I didn't like myself. The Ku Klux Klan started working with Middle East terrorists, and they, because they have something in common, and that's the destruction of Israel. They right. would like to kill every Jew on the face of the earth. And uh, that's not what, I, I certainly knew enough of the Bible to know that anyone who curses Israel is going yes. to be cursed. You That's know, right. and uh, and I uh, I certainly uh, I, I was afraid of that. I had a little bit of fear in me, and so I I once I got to the top, I was very confused. My girlfriend turned out to be an FBI informant, and uh, and and that, that was an ultimate betrayal for me. And uh, so finally, I just decided I didn't want to be the leader. And when I resigned, they all turned against me. They all called me a race traitor and everything else. And so 
I realized that some family they was, they, they, I didn't have a friend in the world. And I sunk in, I couldn't get a job anywhere. I was going broke and I was on the edge of committing suicide uh, when I picked up the Bible and I started reading the Bible. And, uh, By then, yourself? Yes. And I, uh, no, no, I, nobody witnessed well, you? Well, because or? there were so many people who had planted the seed of God into my life from my grandmother who prayed for me on a daily basis. Uh, and there was a black minister by the name of Reverend Wade Watts. And he was the president of the NAACP. And most people have heard of J.C. Watts, the congressman in Oklahoma. Right. This was his uncle. And we had set fire to his church. We tried to burn his church down. I would called him every name in the book. And he looked at me and he says, Johnny, you can't do enough to me to make me hate you. Oh he goes, Lord. I'm going to love you and I'm going to pray for you, whether you like it or not. And, uh, and so, uh, um, and so I, I, I never forgot that. And he just kept praying for me. And I finally got on my knees and I said, Lord, I got nowhere else to turn to. I said, I need your help. And if you'll help me, I promise you, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. And the very next morning, the phone rang and I got a job and uh, went to work and I made $700 the first day on the job. So I knew that God had, had heard my uh, prayers. And uh, so uh, I started going to church. And about a year later, I'm sitting next to my condo with a really nice car, money in my pocket and new friends. And I had started a new process, uh, Romans 12 2, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of yes, your mind. Yes. See, I didn't say just one prayer and, and then after hating black people and, and everything all my life and then jump up and say, wow, now I'm saved and I'm going to call up Michael Jackson and sing We Are the World with him. No, that's not what happened, you know. No. I had to get my mind renewed. So yeah. I started studying God's Word. And I went to Bible studies, started renewing my mind, and then then about a year later, I'm very comfortable in my life when God uh, showed me by a TV program. I was watching a TV show and I saw young people joining hate groups and gangs. And I said, God, these kids are making the same mistake that I made when I was their age. You need to send somebody to go talk to those kids and tell those kids that they're making a bad mistake, a huge mistake. And I, and I, I started praying that and all of a sudden it He's dawned changed. on me that somebody's me. And yeah. I said, oh, okay, God. And uh, because, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And, and people need life experience. They need to talk to someone who's been there and done that. And so I, I called up Reverend Watts. I didn't know what to do. And I called him up and I said, you remember me? And I told him what had happened. And he invited me to come preach in the very same church wow. that we had set fire to. Wow. And uh, he said, uh, he said, you come down and preach for me. I said, how do I get there? He goes, you ought to know you burned it down. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, so I showed up for that day. <laughs> Reverend Watts had 13 children. They were all serving the Lord but four, and that day I gave the altar call, and the four who wasn't serving the Lord came forward and gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Johnny, you know? what an incredible yeah, testimony yeah. for the glory of God. I want you to look into the camera. There are incredible amounts of people around the world watching Helpline right now. Would you pray a prayer for sure. them? Sure. If you're like, like I used to be, and you're watching this show today, and you're bound up with racial prejudice, racial hatred, I want to tell you something, racial reconciliation is what's needed in this world today. Amen. But man cannot reconcile with each other until they first reconcile to God. And they've got to be reconciled to God. So I want you right now, right now, if, if you would say this prayer with me, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to forgive for me. For all the prejudice and hate. All the prejudice and that hate. That I've had in my heart. I've had in my heart. I release it to you, I Lord. I release it to you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord. To help me to see others. To help me to see others. The way that you see them. The way that you see Through them. Galatians 3.28. Through Galatians 3.28. Well, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Neither Jew nor Greek. Nor male nor female. Male nor female. Nor slave nor free. Nor slave nor free. But we are all one. We are all one through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. I ask you, Lord, I ask to you renew, Lord. My mind renew my mind and teach me to love. Teach me to love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Woo! Sorry. Thank you, sir. God bless you. you. Listen, let's tell Johnny, thank you for coming to Helpline. <laughs>